this has been an interesting experience because the first time I've used this milling machine and I find that every new job requires some new tooling um, or a new piece of equipment and today is no exception to that. So one of the issues I have with my machine is that um, I can't get a huge distance between the table and the vertical head. What I want to do is have a convenient way of determining the center of, um, of the holes and picking up um, machined holes and then uh, opening them up. So I've got my DTI here and you can see I've, done, I've got just about enough room. So I've come up with a little scheme here which will use these two um, 5 16 BSF tapped holes and um, I want to have something which clamps on there and then some kind of extension and then a clamp which can enable me to locate this on this side and also from the other side reading outwards for larger diameters. So I did think of uh, having some kind of clamp which could come up from underneath like this. Uh, another solution would be to use some kind of V-block, you know, a V of, of similar proportions to that and maybe about half an inch, three quarter of an inch wide and uh, pick up these set screw holes here and put a bolt through. Um, that's one way. Another way would be actually to cut a semicircular um, groove instead of a V and I can make it the same diameter as this. Um, and it could come on from one side. I think I'm going to go for that option and I've got a piece of uh, aluminium bar here so I think uh, I can make something out of that and then off to one side we'll have a stud with a nut and uh, a bar maybe some, from something a little slimmer, slimmer than this and what I like to do is hold the DTI as close as possible to the underside of the boring head and to be able to move it through a range and then possibly also to hold it from the other side for larger diameters and, and measure that way. So I've got a sketch here um, you can see the boring head bar in the vertical section with the clamp. Um, I've shown here two two holes for the bolts. I don't think that's necessary. That's overkill. I think one in the center will be perfectly sufficient. So um, yeah, I'll cut some material now and we'll get going. This is a piece of uh, one and a half inch diameter aluminium alloy bar. Nice and easy to machine and we can get very quick results from this. So I'm just facing both ends, getting them nice and parallel and to the right length and I'm also chamfering the corners to remove all burrs and then we'll take it over to the milling machine, put it in the vise and uh, set it up for milling the profile. Just need to mill three sides here. Uh, two sides need to be milled to the same depth and I'm just uh, measuring that with my three inch steel rule. And um, I'm also resting the work on parallels, as you can see here. And um, this is uh, quite a quick operation. And then we'll return the work back to the lathe for boring. So I've marked out where I want the center line to be and we're going to bore this out to the diameter of the boring bar and then later we're going to cut that in half to make a semicircular feature.
nicely formed semicircle in the clamp. I have now marked out the center line for the quarter inch stud and I'm picking this up using my lathe center and a DTI. And once I've got everything uh, running concentrically in the four jaw chuck, we'll go ahead and drill and tap the stud hole and then also form the boss diameter. Now that the semicircular saddle clamp is made, it's time to turn attention to the smaller clamp, which actually holds the DTI. This is going to be made from the same material, but one inch diameter. Um, I had a break in between and I realized that I do need a drawing and that's to determine the length of this link which uh, comes off this saddle clamp and supports the other clamp which holds the DTI. What I need to do now is take it over to the milling machine and mill the flats on here and cross drill the hole and ream it for the quarter inch spigot. time to put the center line in for the cross hole. Uh, the distance from this face uh, needs to be the same as the distance between this face and the center line. So I can easily pick that up and then transfer it onto this component. I'm marking the center height now.
Okay, I've set up my um, rotary table. This actually is a homemade one. I think it's some Hemingway kits. And uh, it's the first time I've used it actually for radiusing. It's got a couple of stops here to limit the direction. This isn't going to be perfect. I haven't set it up bang on, but uh, it will give me a little bit of experience of using this rotary table to do some radiusing. So I'm going to go with that. This is the last operation of the day to drill a clearance hole in the saddle clamp for the 516th bolt. Well, this is where we got to so far the saddle clamp uh, with the quarter inch stud already installed, and similarly, I put a quarter inch stud in the DTI clamp. And uh, I have um, slit that just with a hacksaw. It wasn't worth setting up a slitting saw to do that. And I'm very pleased with the way that uh, this grips the DTI. Normally go that way up. Uh, you can see that uh, just a very light nip on that socket head cap screw, and that is totally locked. So next episode, we'll finish this off. Uh, we've got to make this link and um, we have to make um, some washers and also um, the bolt and I have to make the bolt because it's um, not neat not easy to find a 5 16th BSF bolt of the right proportions or they're very expensive so I'm going to make that so hope you join me for the next uh, video and uh, that will come out soon